Hey guys, we're Sean and Chrissy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we're talking Yosemite National Park. Okay. We received an interesting, slightly anonymous question from a viewer named Karen who says that she's afraid of heights. She just started full-time RV travel, and the heights out in California have terrified her. Those sheer drop-offs. Yeah, on... switchbacks and those sort of things have really got her on edge. She says, I would love to go to Yosemite, but what is the road like to Yosemite? Is there something I can view to look ahead and try to avoid the trauma? In fact, there is, and in this video, you're going to see actual footage from the road into Yosemite National Park and also driving around within Yosemite National Park. And in this video, we're going to give you all five tips for visiting Yosemite National Park. Tip number one, plan ahead. And this comes very hard for us because we're not yeah, planners we by not nature. Planners. But in Yosemite, you really have to plan because it is such a popular national park. It's so easy to get to for most people in Northern California. There really aren't a lot of camping options within the park that take reservations be flexible or you have to be willing to stay outside the park or you have to make those reservations for inside the park really far in advance. Depending upon the time of year, some of the attractions of Yosemite may or may not be present. And I'm talking about waterfalls. I've been to Yosemite multiple times and there are certain famous waterfalls I've never been able to see because they're only visible during the early part of the season. And along those lines, the second tip is to favor the shoulder seasons. And we're talking early in the spring or later in autumn. If you go there during the peak of summer, it's going to be slammed probably no matter what time you go. Yeah. In our case, we got incredibly lucky and we lucked into a great campsite on Labor Day weekend, I think, because some of those campgrounds there are first come, first serve. Yes, but you need to check their website very carefully about the length of trailer that you can bring in. Our trailer is 25 feet long and several of those first come, first serve campgrounds cut off at 24 feet. We talked to a ranger and he said we were good to go, so we did go into one of those campgrounds that only allows 24 foot trailers because he said he felt like we were fine. But really beyond that, you're gonna be limited. Yeah, we squeezed into one of the best campsites in the White Wolf campground. Yeah, it was a great site, but I will say there was one turn in there that we were definitely on the limits of making it around that corner, you know? So you really have to take their suggestions, know the full length of your trailer and the full length of your rig, because sometimes it's not just the length of your trailer, it's the length of everything. And by the way, that really shows how the length of your RV can affect your visiting national parks. Mm -hmm. If our trailer had been another foot or two longer, we simply would not have been able to camp in Yosemite. Yeah, we would have been out of luck and we would have had to move somewhere, you know, outside the park. All right, number three, respect nature. Basically, don't act like an idiot. <laughs> and we threw this in there because every year you read about some terrible deaths that were easily preventable at Yosemite. I mean, quite often it's someone, let's say, at the top of a waterfall who don't really realize the danger of being in the water above a waterfall. Yeah. Lose your footing, you get swept over the waterfall to your death. We also personally witnessed a tourist at one scenic stop standing on the ledge overlooking, I wanna say a thousand foot drop at least a thousand feet. Needlessly standing on what is supposed to be the, the wall slash handrail. Do you respect your own life that little? Please just be aware of the dangers around you. Don't go far off the trail to take a better photo. Don't climb out past the railings. Don't step in the water above a waterfall to get a better picture. It's not worth it. Yeah, I mean, in the case of this guy, even if you're confident in your own abilities, do you really trust a big crowd full of anonymous strangers? <laughs> you know, all yeah, it would take. You never know. It would be one little think 
and the guy's gone. Over the edge you go. Next up, in Yosemite, you really need to be prepared for different types of weather mm -hmm. because there are extreme elevation changes at Yosemite. I mean, we're down in the valley and we saw people swimming in the river. You go up in the more mountainous areas and it can be very cold at night. Of course, it can be a lot of rain there. You need to look into the weather forecast. You need to pack appropriately. From a camping standpoint, where we stayed in the White Wolf campground area, you know, there was one small little store that had a few snacks and that was kind of it. Anything else was at least an hour, hour and a half drive to get to. So you need to make sure that you've got everything you need for your food, for your drinks, snacks, all that good stuff that you've got your fridge and pantry well stocked because there's not a lot of options there. And also, as you can see from this road footage, can't really get from point A to point B quickly in Yosemite. There's probably going to be traffic. There are definitely going to be windy switchback roads. And so even though on a map these distances may not look that far apart, it's going to take you a while to traverse your way through the park. Finally, you need to consider camping on BLM land and also in private RV parks mm -hmm. outside of Yosemite if you just can't grab anything inside Yosemite National Park. The western side of the park has more options from that regard as far as the smaller towns that have private run campgrounds. There are probably three small towns maybe within a 45 minute drive of the entrance of the park that have you know numerous RV parks that you can choose from. The eastern side of the park does have some campgrounds outside of it but they're very remote as in there's no real stores or towns nearby. And there's a pretty healthy amount of BLM land outside of the park. Mm -hmm. So you may end up just boondocking for free on BLM land if you are so inclined. So that's it guys, five tips for having a successful RV trip to Yosemite National Park. Again, we really invite our community to chime in in the comments. If you have personal experience in Yosemite, Tell us what works well for you, what you like, what you don't like, where you like to camp, how to get the best camping sites. We want to know. What's your favorite time of year to go? When do you say avoid it at all costs? If you are somebody that usually stays outside of the park, do you have a favorite town that you like to stay in? Do you have a favorite campground you like to stay in? We do plan on returning to Yosemite in the not so distant future. So Maybe look, this year. So look for more Yosemite videos coming soon. Until next time. Wait, before we say that, two things. One, like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends and family. Two, click that little subscribe button down below. Oh, oh. sorry, baby click. girl. So click the subscribe button down below and be sure you click the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe button so that you never miss a fresh long, long honeymoon video. Three, shout out to all you chihuahuas out there. You are not alone. Oh. <laughs> She's getting antsy. All right. Until next time, you guys, we hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And what do we say? Lo -lo -ho. Lo -lo -ho. Yes? My goal is to photograph this object in a way that has never been photographed before. Oh, yeah? Yep, like this. <laughs> never been tried before.